Hey, I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to hide label leader lines for when you're using the new viewport auto text. So if you grab a the label tool and insert a label with layout 2022, we now have several viewport auto text. So we have scene name, scene description, which is blank right now because I don't actually have a scene description on this uh, SketchUp model in this scene. Uh, scale, so right now we're in perspective mode, so we see perspective here, and ratio. So we can choose all of these different auto text to display information about uh, the viewport that the, the label is anchored to, but in most cases, um, so for instance, if we wanna create a detail label like this, we don't want to show this label leader line. So how do we go about hiding a label leader line? So for an existing label, we need to make sure we select it. And as soon as we have an entity and layout selected, all of the related properties, all the related panels that affect you know, certain properties of, of the selected object will update with the current properties of whatever you have selected. So right now I have the label selected and under the shape style panel, we see the stroke, which is this, uh, the leader line right here and the color. So all we have to do is click on this swatch right here and the colors panel will uh, expand if it isn't expanded already. And so now you're in editing mode for this specific color. So all we need to do is drag the opacity slider down to zero. Now we don't wanna color this white. We actually wanna do the opacity because otherwise you'll see you know, a white line over the model. So when I deselect the label, the leader line has now disappeared. All right, so now what if we wanted to pre-configure the tool to have uh, a hidden leader line prior to creating the, the label itself. So to do that, what you do is you activate the tool first and notice that the shape style panel updates to show whatever current default properties we have for the tool itself. So anytime you click on one of these tools, the properties will update to show you which you know, parameters are going to be applied when you use that tool. And what you can do is before you use that tool, you can pre-configure um, what you want these properties to be and it'll, those properties will be saved every single time you use that tool. So if we look at the text tool, you know, we don't have any stroke or anything. Uh, enabled. If we look at the label tool, we have stroke. If we look at the dimensions tool, um, we have different properties here. So going back to the label tool, we'll just do the same thing. We're going to uh, click on the swatch. Now, one thing that I find um, a little confusing, and I actually have another video that kind of dives deep into this specific behavior, but one thing that I find a little confusing about how this swatch um, configuration mode works is if you look really closely at this swatch, when I click on it, see how it turns this gray color, the border turns this gray color. That means you're now in editing mode for this swatch. And the thing that's confusing is, you know, you might come over here and change the color and then, you know, move on to something else. You might come over here and like, change the font and do all this other stuff, but you don't realize this is still in editing mode. So if you come back to the the color uh, panel and you know maybe you're trying to configure a color to apply to something, if you start playing around with these sliders, you're actually still editing this stroke here because you still see this gray outline. So I actually still had it activated from when I was first showing you previously in the video. Um, that's why I had to like click it and then click it again. So just keep an eye out for that when you're uh, clicking on swatches to change 
the color. So I've brought the opacity down to zero. I'm going to click it again to deactivate editing mode. And again, I have another video that kind of goes into that behavior if you want to learn more about that. And now the label tool is pre-configured to have a invisible leader line. So I can come over here and add a label and the leader line will be invisible. And so if I, if I come over to the text tool and type in some text and then go back to the leader tool, the label tool, it's going to remember those settings that, that I configured uh, previously for that tool. All right, now what if you wanted to kind of save several uh, configurations of the label tool to quickly be able to switch back and forth between different modes? Well, to do that, you can use a scrapbook. You can create a custom scrapbook and then just sample the properties that you want uh, to apply to the label tool. So to do that, just go up to File, New. We're going to just create a new um, a new file, and this is going to be saved as a scrapbook. And so a scrapbook is literally just a layout file. So anything you place in a layout file can become a scrapbook object that you can sample into other, um, other projects. So just to show you an example, the new, um, the new version of layout, layout 2022, has additional scrapbooks that have the new auto text features uh, built in. So if you don't want to create a detail label from scratch, you can just click on this one here, place it in your, your file, and then you can jump in here and attach these labels. So you double click, enter, you can attach this label. Oh, that's scene description. So uh, I actually don't have a scene description here. So let me do scene name. So select, we don't want to double click on the name itself because it's going to make us uh, edit the edit the text. So we want to just double click on the leader line or just tap enter and then you can drag that anchor up there. I'm going to do another video kind of more on on kind of setting up templates and stuff. But so this is what a scrapbook is. You can you can drag objects from a scrapbook into your document. But there's another interesting feature about scrapbooks where you can sample um, properties from objects that you have saved in the scrapbook. So let's jump back to the scrapbook that we were creating and I'll show you what I mean. So let's grab the label tool and we're going to just insert a standard label just like this. Okay. And actually maybe we want the, the, the font to be a little bit bigger. So we have one there and then I'll just, I'll copy this. Um, actually, I'll just create a new one. And this time I will edit the color to have the opacity down to zero. And we'll draw this one. And this one I'll say um, label no leader. And we'll bring the font size up on this as well. Okay, so we have two labels here. This is kind of just a standard label and this is a label with no leader. I'm going to save this as scrapbook. So file, save as scrapbook and we'll call this um, we'll call this labels. And there's some logic on where you would want to save this. I'm just going to go to the, the default location. But now if we go back to our file and we go to our scrapbooks panel and click this drop down menu, we'll now see our new scrapbook right here. So right here is our new scrapbook. And so we could just click on one of these objects and stamp it into our file like this um, using the select tool. So with the select tool, you just click on something and you can stamp it you know, as many times as you want like this. But actually what we want to do is sample the properties 
to apply those, those default properties to the tool itself. So what we do is grab the label tool first, and then when we hover over the scrapbook, we get this sample um, icon or cursor. And so I can sample, let's sample the, uh, the, this one here first. And so that's gonna have a leader line. Or with the label tool, we can sample this one. And we have um, a label with no leader line. All right, so that's gonna wrap up this video. I just wanted to kind of refresh some of these features of scrapbooks and, and how to edit the label tool. Now this is all really basic layout, uh, layout features and it's all covered in my book, SketchUp to Layout, second edition. Uh, I, I do a deep dive into all of these kind of basic fundamental features in SketchUp and Layout and if you want to check it out, you can go to sketchuptolayout.com. Um, it's also on Amazon if you would rather purchase it on Amazon over there. So uh, that's all I've got for you in this video. I'm going to do another video. Um, I want to show you how to set up kind of like a template file where you can have all of these detail labels linked to viewports, but be able to quickly swap out a SketchUp file so you don't have to relink the, the detail labels themselves. So I think that's gonna be a really cool video. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed already. That way you don't miss it when that video comes out. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.